Okay, hello. <laughs> Hi, I don't know how to do an intro. We're week 10 of football. That's wow. good Broncos is what this show is. <laughs> and it is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app. When you sign up there, use code DNVR. Uh, also, if you're looking for DNVR merch, DNBR Locker is where you do that. They've got probably the best Colorado sports clothes uh, out there. So use my code PERNA when you sign up there for a discount. And uh, Will, Will Keys is here with me, my co-host. Today we interview Raider Cody, since it's Broncos Raiders week, treading the waters of enemy territory, Will. Um, I scheduled the interview when Will was not available uh, because that's how organized I am. And then Will and I got a little delayed with the start of today's episode because we were both taking shits uh, right one after another. And it's just been uh, one of those those kind of weeks. That was really the only thing we've been able to coordinate successfully this week. Is our bowel movements. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like when, when two dudes work together – it's like when like women are living together in the yeah. same house. Our uh, our shits sync up. Sync up. That is that might be true actually. Yeah. That reminds me of like uh like in college, like going out with a bunch of dudes. Everybody's like drunk, and then the next morning, everybody's just got to take the worst shits all at the same time. And you're like just black. like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like Disgusting. if you don't get that bathroom first, you're. Uh, you're out of luck. You're out of, yeah, you're shit out of luck. <laughs> oh, man. No, you're totally right. I, I went through Sober October uh, successfully and then came out the other side and uh, immediately made up for lost time. <laughs> and, yeah, I was like, damn, I wish. I, I, I miss my um, normal bowels are, are better to have. Yeah, it, it's almost like you – you do more harm to your body by not drinking for a month because then that first week after you just binge. Yeah, you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot what this is like. <laughs> yeah. So instead of it being like maybe, you know, two or three drinks on a night, you got like mm -hmm. seven or eight drinks in one night, multiple nights that week to catch up. Yeah, that's not good for the body. That said, I did have, I did partake in some whiskey last night. Tuesdays have turned into my whiskey night because Sunday – Monday and Tuesday, there's just like so much work to do that I have to I have to hit the sauce on Tuesday nights. You just, you're a whiskey guy exclusively now. I mean, pretty much. It's whiskey, hard seltzer, or maybe a beer if I'm at somebody else's house, which is very yeah. very rare now. Like, <laughs> true. What do you get like if you if you're going for example to the DNVR bar? Which maybe it should be called the DNV bar, but I'm not oh. here to offer suggestions for free. Yeah. Um, what do you What are you ordering at a bar like that? What kicking back, watching watching Broncos Raiders next well, year? Well, I mean, it would depend. Like, if they had a, a whiskey that I like, then I would just drink whiskey straight. Um, if I want to be if I want something that tastes a little more fun, I'll do an old fashioned, still a whiskey drink. But if I'm in a good mood and I just want to like, oh, get some sugar in my body, uh, probably a Moscow mule. Okay. That was, I, I drink, I drink a lot of mules for a while. That's a, a nice, cause it's not overly sweet. Uh, I do, I would kill for a, a, a really good like restaurant margarita oh yeah not like yeah. and not a shit margarita that's just a ton of triple sec or whatever like a nice real lime juice margarita my wife and i were watching cobra kai last night and they were eating at a mexican mm -hmm. restaurant and she was just like man i miss going out to mexican restaurants so bad she's like i just want chips and salsa right now <laughs> there's a mexican restaurant like a five minute walk away from me and yeah, now I think I'm, you, you, you put the need for a margarita yeah. straight in my, into my veins. No, I might need to get one Yeah, good right after this podcast is, ends. It's hard to beat. Um, yeah. Well, we do have some Broncos stuff to talk about today. Uh, first, I think I will 
cut to my interview with Raider Cody. Uh, he's got a, a YouTube channel, a podcast. I followed him on Twitter. He was like, hey, we should collab this week. And I was like, okay, yeah. And uh, we had a, a nice conversation, very respectful conversation between a Raiders fan and a Broncos fan. And that's, I think – That's disappointing. I think our country should take example of me and a Raiders fan coming together. <laughs> It is sad that, like, it feels like sports fans are getting along better than like pretty well these days. Yeah. And the people who run our country uh, have, have taken the uh, – they've grabbed the torch in the yeah. not getting along department. Let's burn it to the ground. Let's burn it to the ground. Raider Cody, here we go. Here we are with Raider Cody from the interwebs, YouTube, Twitter – uh, pretty convenient that your first name is Raider and you were, uh, just happened to be a Raiders fan, uh, yeah. Raider Cody. Uh, thanks for, for joining me here today. It is Broncos Raiders week. Always a fun week in the AFC West. Um, some people on Twitter said we should, we should collab or do you say yeah. we should collab and the support was strong. So here we are. It's been uh, kind of brewing up for a while now, man. We, we followed each other for a little bit. And I, I don't follow too many uh, enemies, you know. Uh, I, right. I, see a, I see his enemy, uh, kind of friendly enemy, I guess you could say. So, yeah, I, I've, yeah I've seen some of the, you know, some of the, the, the loyal viewers, obviously some that, li you know, watch both of our shows. And they, they threw it out there a couple times. They're like, Raider Cody and that's good sports. Let's do it. So, I'm like, hey, if, if they're supporting a cross collaboration with Denver and Las Vegas, then I think it, it needs to be done. And, you know, obviously we probably have, you know, a couple things in common. It's we all yeah. hate the chiefs and yes, uh, Von Miller is pretty cool. So we have a couple things in common. See it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I think you might've stole one of my questions already. Um, oh but boy. <laughs> the, the AFC West can, uh, well, at least the Raiders chiefs or Raiders Broncos and chargers fans can, we can all hate the chiefs together right now since they're top of the division. Um, yeah. I guess I, I'm trying to connect. I think people wanted us to come together because we're both decent at talking shit. Is, <laughs> would that be a fair assessment? It could be. It could be. I try not to be that guy. I try not to, um, but then I yeah, find myself. It's, like in, it's yeah. in good fun. I don't think any of us yeah. are we're over the top, but when you can get fans to hate watch you, it, it benefits. <laughs> it does. Hate listens count. Um, okay, so – I've just got a couple questions here since uh, I'm trying to gain insight to the Raiders. Um, every time I start to think they're, they're turning the corner and they're legitimately like a pretty good football team, like they've got a base there. Uh, I get a little bit nervous about Derek Carr. So I just wanted to know yeah. like where you're at with Derek Carr, because we've seen him play some pretty great games this season. Yeah. We've seen him play pretty average games, but the team mm -hmm. still wins like he did against, you know, Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, so what, how do you feel about Derek Carr right now? I know he That's, follows you, so you probably, you probably got to say some nice things. Nice things. <laughs> I got to keep this politically correct. No, um, <laughs> I, I always, uh, I try and keep things as, as real as possible. I try and respect the players no matter what, but you know, Derek's been one of those guys that, um, it's probably, you guys are in a similar situation early on right now with Drew Locke. Uh, the franchise isn't necessarily where you want it to be. Had Drew Locke came into the picture, you know, right after the, the Peyton Manning era, he'd probably been in, in a different situation. For Derek Carr, he's coming into what's been a dumpster fire most of his career. I mean, right. the, the end of the Oakland era, the end of, of everything going on there, um, just a complete rebuild. John Gruden coming in, cleaning house. Uh, it's, it's been rough for him. But, you know, last year we started seeing some things being put together. Obviously, there were some missing elements there, I felt like, to our offense to really make things click. This year we're seeing it. Uh, there are some shaky moments. Um, there's things like where I want to see Henry Ruggs. I want to see that connection get a little bit better. Um, but even like the Cleveland game, I mean, that might have been one of his worst games of the season. Uh, but given like the, the you know, the, the weather and everything that was going on there, high winds, it was dang near snowing. There was hail, uh, raining right. half the game. And then they go to halftime. It comes out, it's sunny. It's like, what are we doing? We're, we played three different football games all in one day. Um, so I think given the circumstances, being five and three, with the strength of our opponents, 
we're playing pretty well. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, come on here and be like, you're going down, Brandon. Like, we're taking <laughs> down the Broncos. I'm not like, you know, overly confident. I'm, I'm still not, you know, a Chiefs fan here. I'm still, you know, I'm still level-headed. Um, right. And and this is going to be a, a shootout either way. But we're really happy with the way number four has been playing. For once, the fan base somewhat agrees that Derek Carr is playing pretty well. And that takes a lot for Raiders fans to get off of his back pretty much all the way. I mean, I've, I've follow them all, all the, I mean, the, the worst of the, the trolls, you know, Twitter, I mean, think, think of a Raiders fan in your head and think of how bad Twitter can be. That is like the worst combination that you can have probably. So for them to be semi cool and actually back Derek up and compliment him, I'm pretty impressed. And, and hopefully, you know, it all depends though. We got to see how he plays down the stretch because that's all that matters. You know, first half of the season has always been a little bit favorable, favorable for him, but now we got to see how we play the second half of the season and see where that goes. But I want to flip that over to you now and Drew Locke. How's the, how's the fan base feel about Drew Locke? Uh, it's, a, it's a roller coaster. You know, one week everybody's <laughs> high on him. The next week everybody wants to shit on him. <laughs> uh, today in his press conference, he had to remind people that uh, the players are human too. So I think the, mm. the players are hearing a lot of the, the Twitter noise that you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, I think like Broncos fans just have to be patient with Drew Locke. I think we got excited because we saw some really good things last season. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, they switched offensive coordinators this off season. Mm -hmm. They don't have an off season to work together. Drew Locke gets hurt again this year early. So there's just been a lot that went against him succeeding right now Uh, in addition to being young and trying to figure out how to play in the NFL losing Cortland Sutton I think was like a like him and Cortland had uh, some of the some some of Drew Locke's best plays were to Sutton so he's not on the field but Jerry Judy's starting to come along so I think we just have to be patient and remind ourselves that he needs time to develop I'm not sure Pat Shermer is the best fit for him, but I think once Drew Locke learns to see the whole field, there are opportunities. He's just not getting them right now or taking advantage of them when, when they yeah. are there on the field. Uh, the defense, too, like it's been decimated by injuries. Shelby Harris is going to be out longer because of COVID. So you guys should be able to run the ball effectively this <laughs> weekend. Um, but I think like – the difference right now, if I'm looking at the Broncos offense and the Raiders offense, mm-hmm. Derek Carr's been very safe with the football, just two picks yeah. this year, right? So the Broncos have been through three quarterbacks. They've had like 12 interceptions, I think, on the season so far. And really, what I think your guys' weakness is, and maybe correct me, is your defense is not opportunistic. You're not getting oh, a lot geez. of turnovers from the defense, yeah. those type of plays that would – totally benefit Derek Carr because he's playing safe football and giving that op- offense just a couple opportunities for easy scores. Um, so my question is, what should the Broncos do to beat the Raiders this weekend? Uh, you're going to have to, fan, you're going to have to stop the run. And, and the way you said you're not going to be able to stop the run, uh, man, it, and it's unfortunate. I, I will say, you know, Shelby Harris, ex-Raider, um, I go off for him and any, obviously any player having COVID. Um, for us, it made me think, I immediately thought of how you guys won the game last year. The, the tip ball and two-point conversion from Shelby Harris is what Dude, won you guys the game. He's been so good at batting down passes and tipping balls. It's like an insane sort of stat. He's just <laughs> so good at it. <laughs> so it's a, I don't want to say it's a sigh of relief because I never want a guy to go on the COVID list, but uh, we're going to run the ball is what we're going to do. Josh Jacobs right now, even though – we found a little backup that you guys are very familiar with, yeah. Devontae Booker. <laughs> Booker's and playing well. He came out of nowhere, man. Yeah. He play, I think he had like a year off. I don't even, I don't even know if he hardly, hardly played last year, if like much at all. He would um, get like one carry a game, one pass a game, basically. Yeah, <laughs> might as well just be nothing. You know what I mean? Might as well just go out there and warm up and, and go back to the practice squad or whatever. So it's really nuts. It's like taking a year off, and he comes out this year, and, and he's doing well for us. And, and it, I think it's mainly just because teams are – I don't want to say they're sleeping on him, but they're so focused on Josh Jacobs when he's in the game. Josh Jacobs, right. even though he's not getting as big of a workload as he could, he's still, I think, second in carries this season. So he's still getting oh, okay. the ball quite a bit. Um, and we're going to establish the run is what we're going to do. And then from there, uh, we've been good about, like you said, you know, we play safe football and we take calculated shots down the field. I mean, it, it's pretty much we're going to, you know, get everybody up in the box. And then we're going to find that one matchup that we like down the field. And, you know, more times than not, 
that shot down the field is going to be pretty freaking close to happening. Um, and that's kind of where the game either gets won or it is just a tight game all the way down the stretch. So if we can get right. a few down the field, that's where the Raiders offense really starts to get moving. And I know that defense of yours with the injuries that's going on, you guys started off pretty hot and you guys have had a good defense now yeah. for many years, but the injuries, man. It's like, if, if the starters were there, I'd feel good about, stopping the run because Mike Purcell and Shelby Harris on the field at the same time with Alexander Johnson, they were just doing a great job against the run. Well, pretty good job. There's some little things this season, but then last week we're down Bryce Callahan and AJ Boye. I don't know where their status Ooh. is for this week. So yeah, you guys are, you're getting the Broncos kind of at a, a good time for, for a win. Um, but I think, like, the surprise for me with the Raiders right now is kind of how well Nelson uh, Aguilar is playing. <laughs> That's the like, surprise in the world. It's, <laughs> uh, he leads in touchdowns, right? Um, yeah. Not dropping the ball like he's been knocked for by yeah. fans saving babies and, and mentioning <laughs> on, on live television. Um, I'm so glad we adopted that meme. It's, like, probably one of the best, <laughs> best things ever. We get to use it every time now that he actually makes a catch. We had someone uh, – he, they Photoshop. This is why I love Twitter is for all the Photoshops. And they had, them, uh, they had a Photoshop of Nelson Aguilar high-pointing a baby in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that, that's probably one of the greatest fans of all time, that dude. <laughs> Good um, stuff. Who, okay, so maybe I just mentioned him, but who's a, a, an underrated player on, on the Raiders roster right now? Ooh, I was about to ask you almost the same question for you guys, but I'm going to go with uh, probably Hunter Renfro. Uh, and he's underrated, I would say, on the field, on and off the field. I mean, off the field, the dude looks like he's going to adjust your insurance on the sideline. Yeah, exactly. He, he has, you know, like he's, he's, he's subbing for class. Like he's going he's gonna to get done with his game on Sunday, and then Monday he has a class to go substitute teach. Right. So he, he's definitely he's, – he's different. He's wild. But he's such like a, a, a weird, raw football player. He just knows there's like all these rookie wide receivers that we bring in, like a Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs, and these guys are super talented physically. Um, of course, they're still rookies, so they got to, you know, learn the ropes of a pro. And uh, they're talking about Renfro knowing, like, every single release that's possible. Um, right. So he's just, like, so just knowledgeable on things like that. So he's he's super sneaky, in, uh, in my opinion. I think he's the Raiders' second leading receiver right now. And it's just real, real low-key. Like, when it comes down to crunch time, you might not see him out there on the field hardly the first couple quarters. It's weird how this works. He'll be returning punts. And then all of a sudden you'll see him out there trotting on the field whenever it's in crunch time and like every ball is going to him. He, he runs these routes that are um, not really designed routes. It's kind of like option routes or if you're sitting in soft zone coverages, his job is to go find the hole in the zone okay. and sit there and hopefully just catch a rocket to his chest. Like that's kind of just like right. his thing. So that's, uh, that's my, I guess, uh, sleeper for the Raiders offense. Now to flip it over to you, your offense – Obviously, you know, we're used to the, you know, Demarius Thomas days, the Emmanuel Sanders days. Right. You don't have those guys right now. Who, in your opinion, are your top playmakers, and who should Raider Nation be looking for if the ball's in their hands? Who are we looking for? Well, Jerry Judy just had a huge game against the Falcons. So, Judy's really started – like, the crazy thing about Judy is, like, he's torching dudes off the line of scrimmage. He's running excellent routes every yeah. game, and he's getting, like, a lot of attention for that – but since the Broncos have gone through three quarterbacks this season, um, <laughs> it's just he hasn't gotten the the targets he sort of needed to kind of just show up like as that dominant player. Um, yeah. They're just getting K.J. Hamler I involved in the game, so that's going to be like what our version of hopefully what you guys drafted in Henry Ruggs. I'm going to stop you right there, actually. K.J. Hamler coming back. There's a little dispute going on. Who's faster, Henry Ruggs or KJ Hamler? Ooh, I know. Like they were the, uh -huh. the and they're the two like top top three speed dudes yeah. in the, the draft, right? So I don't know. I don't know who's faster. I know Ruggs, Ruggs. is super fast, but Ruggs is faster. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> we're just trying to get those guys involved. And then we had, you know, tight end uh, Albert O, because his last name's impossible to say, but he tore his he tore his ACL last week. Him and Locke played together oh, at Missouri, shoot. and they're starting to build, like, a connection there. Uh, Man. So, like, Cortland Sutton out, their tight end who was going to compliment Noah Fant, he's out. Uh, Philip Lindsay's been banged up on and off. 
Melvin Gordon's fumbled a few times. But honestly, the, the best offensive player this season has been Garrett Bowles. What? Garrett Bowles has just been a stud. Like, the penalties are gone. He's, like, one of the highest-rated linemen in the NFL. He's playing well every week. So, my sleeper guy, Garrett freaking Bowles, man. That's amazing. That is amazing. That was almost John Gruden. Garrett Bowles, man. <laughs> I can't do Gruden. I need it. Will, Will, Will's had a scheduling conflict. He can do Gruden. So oh, he's he the Gruden to, voice. Oh, yeah, he man. can do it. Garrett Bowles. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, I've never yeah. I've I haven't heard that. I'm not too familiar with the offensive line, but ours has been banged up. Ours has been yeah. oh it's a we have a revolving door right now at right tackle. Um and left tackle, I don't even know. Hopefully Colton Miller comes back. So if there's no Colton Miller, then yeah, it's gonna look rough again for us. Yes, yeah, was Trent Brown out? Mm, Trent Brown's like he has COVID he's back on the COVID list, oh, but I don't shit. think he ever tested positive, is what's kind of weird. I, he did it first, um, that put him on the list, and then he was – they called him, like, asymptomatic. But then he was having symptoms but not uh, testing positive. It was super weird. So, they're deeming him out like a month. I'm like, shoot, man. That's uh, it's kind of crazy. And that's a big boy. So, it's like, man, you know, you uh, start affecting the, the lungs in there and, and the breathing capabilities of, of a big guy like that, then, uh, you know, asking for trouble. So, we'll – that's something to so track saying, for us. edge rushers might, uh, might make a difference on the Broncos' D. If there is a number 70 at right tackle, <laughs> then, I mean, I don't know. I'm honestly, I, I don't want to put a petition out. I'm cool with putting Jason Witten at right tackle at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's getting to the point to where, I mean, we're down to, I don't think any tackles. If, if we dropped another tackle, then our backup center yeah. who played tackle in college would go back out there. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the Broncos right tackle position has been a, a, a thorn in our side for like the last five years so I feel you I feel your pain and I think DeMar Dotson who's been playing right tackle and playing pretty well uh he got hurt in the last game I don't know what his status is for this week so uh sounds like this game's a little bit of a shit show for both teams (laughs) it usually is man there's uh Uh, that's true that's true (laughs) it's that's what's nice about these uh these division rivals like this it's um no matter what even if we were playing at the level of like the Chiefs, like maybe losing a game or two um, or, you know, being highly dominant for the last five years. It doesn't matter going into this thing. Like we just beat the oh, Chiefs. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it does not matter. The, it, or you can be like the Chargers and get close every single game and somehow choke. But yeah, I you mean, get- that's not, <laughs> you know, it's not quite us, but it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> Boy, I mean, the Raiders and the Broncos just really tore the still-beating heart out of the Chargers' chest the last two weeks. <laughs> Poor, poor Justin Herbert. I've never seen like a young quarterback play so well and just yeah. lose so many games. It's such a Chargers thing to do. Um, <laughs> They're never going to get out of this. No. Okay, I'm going to let you get out of here. But what I yeah. wanted to know is yeah. two, okay? One, your all-time most hated Bronco and your all-time favorite Bronco that you have to admit that you like even though it goes against everything in your being. Man, that is a tough one. Most hated Bronco? How do I narrow that down? Um, well, you got to pick one. I'm going to go with Aqib Tlaib. <laughs> <laughs> Most hated Bronco. Because, oh, man. I mean, oh, I mean where, that makes sense. Him and Crabtree, that's a great – I'm telling you, I was there uh, that game during the big fight, the second one, where it went to the sidelines and they're boxing in the end zone. Um, and, and I was uh, – we were actually – our company had a suite right above that end zone. And uh, I felt like I was, like, trying to, like, coach him. I'm like, jab, jab, jab. I'm like, I'm like, rip his, I'm like rip his helmet off. Rip his helmet off. And, that's uh, hilarious. Yeah, that was uh, – that def- that's probably definitely the most hated. And I'd say the most liked – shoot man um if like ex bronco i would say i I don't for some reason i like um like hmm, shannon sharp he's kind of cool um but i'm gonna go i I think von miller like if i had to pick a bronco right now that a low-key i actually like um and hate i don't say i hate to admit it i kind of hate to admit it just because he has a bronco and it's kind of nasty to say it right um but i think a lot of people like von miller because he's he's not an asshole he's not yeah, overly cocky, and he just seems like 
cool. Like he's this great edge rusher who's a chicken farmer at, at times. Like Yeah, and he's you know, I mean he's always <laughs> he's just an interesting Actually. cat. <laughs> and he's he's nice. He's always nice to us in press conferences. Like he's very uh well spoken right. and professional. He doesn't like make it like a weird thing. Um that goes a long way. I, now I'm gonna flip it. Okay, now you gotta answer the question. Who's who's the most hated raider of all time? Antonio and who, Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have something in common. That's my most there we hated go. Raider of all time. Uh, man, I mean, like, as somebody who had a love-hate relationship with Bill Romanowski when he was a Bronco, <laughs> seeing him as a Raider, uh, I did not like that. Um, Hunter Renfro, definitely my current favorite Raider. I like that. I just ordered his jersey, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how you could not root for little Hunter Renfro out there. Right? And I say that as he's bigger than me, you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> Maybe. Let's see, I'm trying to think of a Raider that I liked. Uh, definitely not Khalil Mack because Five I respected the way he played the game, <laughs> but he embarrassed uh, Michael Schofield. Um, I think probably maybe one I, I respect the most is Woodson. Oh, I like that. That's uh, that's my I got it right here on the on the wall, yeah. man. That's my favorite there, player yeah, of all right time. Yeah, right there. Didn't didn't love him like while he was you know a Raider, but yeah, yeah. that's a guy's career. I I think I really respect so. I like that. Uh, I'll go with Much that respect. One. I guess I'll be nicer to Broncos fans on Twitter. After that. that was a good one. Yeah, we'll try. We'll, try. we'll do our best. <laughs> but man, hey, I appreciate the collaboration, dude. This was fun. Um, yeah, where can uh, where can people find your work? Well, if you're a Broncos fan, you might not want to come looking for it. It's a little. That's, that's fine. Got to promote can, it though. You can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at Raider Cody. Uh, follow me on Sunday. It's actually fun. It's actually a fun timeline. If you want to join Crazy Raider Nation. Um, we're, we're all about the wildness, um, and RaiderCody.com. I have the, uh, YouTube and podcast links. You just search Raider Cody, wherever you listen to anything and, and I'm there. Um, awesome. and I guess I'm going to be dropping this on mine. So where can we find all your stuff, man? I know you cover a lot of NFL stuff. So where do we find yours? Yeah, that's good. Sports is my main YouTube channel. So just look that up. I cover all of the NFL, not just the Broncos there. So, Every Monday, I do like a, a best and worst of NFL Sunday. So that's probably the episode we put the most work into and just grind out trying to get it up. So if you're looking for a lot of dumb jokes and, and football info, that's where you'd do it. <laughs> that's all anyone looks for on the internet, isn't it? Well, I, I would like to see more, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're doing a good job then. You're contributing to a good cause. <laughs> Thank you, Raider Cody. Good stuff, man. See ya. So, yeah. Okay. A uh, pretty solid interview, if I do say so myself. Will. Yeah, I agree. Um, you, you know, you know a lot about what Raider Cody and I just discussed because you mm -hmm. definitely watched the segment. Uh, what was your big takeaway from that? Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm. I yeah. Here's my takeaway: the Raiders' <laughs> offensive line. Uh, is being held together by bandages right now. So if there's hope for a, a Broncos win, as banged up as the Broncos' defensive line is, I think they can get pressure on Derek Carr this week. Um, we talked a little bit about Nelson Aguilar uh, having five touchdowns this season. That was kind of a surprise for me. And uh, a lot of Hunter Renfro hype. Between the two of us, really. I mean, if you're going to root for a Raider, Hunter Renfro is the guy to root for. It's always fun to see, like, a 25-year-old with a receding hairline. <laughs> yeah. The 25-year-old who looks kind of like he's in his mid-40s, but also <laughs> is an elite athlete is, is kind of cool. Yeah. And he does – yeah, it's it, he's like a, an anomaly. He yeah. does not – Because, like, back, back in the day, like – Guys didn't really figure out that you should just shave your head. Um, and that another thing is that mustaches make you look a lot older. So if you go back to like the 70s and like even into the 80s, athletes just looked so much less athletic and they look so much older. And I think I want Hunter Renfro to, to, to grow like a, just a big hairy mustache along with the receding hairline and, and bring that kind of thing back. Yeah, he should let the hair grow out a little bit. Like, his hair should be my length. Yeah. 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 Like, real real widow's peak. 
just <laughs> clinging to it. Like uh, I'm trying to like Fred Bolitnikoff maybe. Oh, yes. To uh, to channel another Raiders wide receiver. Blitzy Bob Bo- Blitzy. You would also smoke me. several packs a day. Yeah, athletes smoking cigarettes. Miss that too. Yeah. Yeah, and he'd like you know dip his hands in uh, whatever you called it, the stickum. Ooh, yeah, they should allow that. I mean, the gloves are basically stickum. Yeah, no, the gloves are so sticky. I've got. Have you ever caught like a yeah like a football with nice receiver gloves? It is so much easier. It's way easier. Mm -hmm. Um, Drew Locke turned twenty four yesterday. Welcome to the twenty four club, Drew. So Drew Locke is the same age as Will. So let that sink in. Yeah. Uh, If if you if you can see how mature Will is, if you can think about Will leading a football team to victory every week, that should give you an idea of why we should be patient with Drew Locke, which is what I said when I was talking to Raider Cody. Uh, And I think maybe some of the criticism is getting to the Broncos. Uh, We heard Shelby Harris kind of call out the fans like last week. And then Drew Locke was out, asked about Albert O's injury uh, today. And um, let me look up Ryan Koenigsberg's quote tweet from it. Yeah, so Drew, so Locke, Drew Locke kind of said that it makes me they sad. weren't being treated as humans. Actually, sad as a human. Believe it or not, we are humans even though we play a game. So I think there's a lot to actually unpack from that statement. Uh, I agree. I think it's Drew Locke, you know, revealing he he really cares about his tight end. Uh, but I guess my concern there is we know you're human, Drew Locke. I also know yeah. there's a lot of really shitty people online who say some of the worst shit you could imagine. You have to tune that out. But I'm a little worried that that might be getting to Drew Locke, and that scares me a little bit. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the Baker Mayfield thing where you feel like he is aware of every single piece of criticism. Yeah. Like clearly Drew Locke like knew about the Colin Coward stuff, right, which I think right. was just kind of fucking dumb. So I don't think that really matters as much. Uh, I mean, as long as he's like not going on to Cowherd to debate him like, uh, like Baker Mayfield was. Right. Uh, you know, I feel better about that. But yeah, you want your quarterback to just be kind of like Peyton Manning, where he's like, he doesn't even have a Twitter, doesn't have anything. Yeah, you can tell he he really just kind of uh, he's all in on football from like the hours of you know whatever. It's like a job to him, and then kind of after that, he's like, okay, well, I'm gonna be a family man now. And it feels like they have a good like separation and kind of just tunes it out. I mean, the the same time though, like when you when you're Peyton Manning, there's not a lot of crit- criticism that you need to to take uh, seriously. So yeah, I mean, could be, could be that th- you got to think too. Like Peyton Manning's first year in the NFL is it's so much different than a rookie's first year now in terms of the amount yeah. of ways they can find criticism, right? So like when Peyton Manning was a rookie. Maybe he got criticized a lot in Indianapolis newspapers, maybe on like ESPN and some local maybe sports news, but you've really got to go out and seek those sort of things to to take it in. Like if you're a, a young player on Twitter or, you know, whatever your social media preference is, you're going there for multiple reasons, right? Like to interact maybe with, your fans, with your friends, to consume entertainment in other sources, but you're going to find fucking criticism coming at you. Like, if I go on Twitter looking for, I don't know, something about the Broncos, I'm going to see stuff about politics. I'm going to see somebody saying something funny to me or something weird to me. Like, I'm going to get stuff that I don't intend to see. So I think that's like a weird consequence of being a young athlete now. Like, even if you're trying to separate from it, it's almost like you can't unless you're not on that shit at all. And uh, I think yeah. the Broncos are on it, a lot of them. I mean, that's just what life is. But Yeah, they feel to- like they've been very like active in responding to yeah. criticism. 
They have to realize how much better they are than normal humans and just be like, fuck these guys. I play pro football. They can say whatever they want. Uh, I'm going to be like Twitter's Twitter's cool because you feel like you can, like you could just write something at any time to one of your favorite players and like they're probably going to see it and they might even interact with you and might say something back. So it's really cool in that regard. Uh, But it's also kind of concerning for the same reason because like you you can you can say whatever you want to them and and they're probably going to see it yeah well and that's the thing it's like i don't ever tweet two players when i'm being like critical of the broncos during the game it's just like yeah general observations because it's in the heat of the moment a lot of the times it's like it's sarcastic or in jest but there are people who will go straight to somebody and tell them to like fuck off and die you suck you're you know like just the worst stuff (laughs) and it's like a it's a microcosm of really a much bigger problem with social media and criticism but uh it 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 scares me a little bit knowing that's getting to drew lock um but that said maybe he plays well against the raiders and we feel better about that next week and forget about it (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's like a problem with Derek Carr too, and like this whole younger generation of quarterbacks. It they seem a little more, I don't know, a little more fragile probably than than past generations. Just because, or maybe like I don't know, because I don't want to say the other ones weren't fragile because you had quarterbacks that just like couldn't handle pressure in game. Yeah. And it feels like these ones are just kind of, I don't know, they they let the outside noise in because the it's not even outside noise. It's just like noise that you, it's, it's hard to get away from. Yeah. Like back in the day, you could kind of just like, okay, well, I'm not going to flick on ESPN or I'm like not even subscribing to the local news. Right. But now it really is just like you click on your phone and it's going to be there. Yeah, if you don't have, like, seconds. your notification shut off, it'll pop up on your phone without you even opening your yeah, phone. Yeah, it comes to you. It, today, like, it comes to you rather than <laughs> right. you having to, to go to it. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's I, – and I don't think, like, like most people I have seen, like, I don't, I don't think we no, forget I, the fact that athletes are human. I think yeah. we, we kind of – We're, no, we're well-adjusted people. More these days. Yeah, yeah, you and I, we don't do that. Cause we do, we like, we kind of do know these guys having talked to a few of them as people, as real people. Yeah. So I think that helps. Um, yeah. It's something where you, you really just have to cut out the noise and uh, stay focused. Yeah. And I think like maybe uh, if you're somebody who's tweeting two players saying terrible shit, don't. Yeah. Maybe, and, maybe chill uh, out. Maybe get just, a life give Drew Locke a little time. Like, yeah, we've, we've criticized the way he's played. We've criticized Pat Shermer, uh, but he's young. We've got to, we've got to give him a chance to get through this season. Um, We want to see like a complete game out of Drew Locke. We've talked about it, but uh, Jerry Judy starting to look real nice. Bryce Callahan uh, and AJ Boye, both back on the practice field, which is good news. Devontae Bosby back on the Broncos roster. Huge. Can we talk about that for a second? Yes, we definitely can. It doesn't make any sense to me. I was like, I saw that the Cardinals cut him. Right. Which I don't like, did he, I, I, maybe he got torched in that Dolphins game. I really didn't see nothing. I saw him on the field. Oh, was he? Yeah. I saw him like when I was kind of keeping the game um, on the other TV. And, like, I saw the back of his jersey and I saw Bosby. I was like, well, I'm glad he's out there. And something must have happened. They cut him. And <laughs> I, I saw people on Twitter being like, bring back Bosby. I was like, it's not going to happen. Like, they cut him for a reason. Something's going on there that we don't know about. They have some kind of uh, weird fetish for Devontae Harris. Uh, and maybe, like, maybe it really just took that that one Falcons game to make them realize, like, oh, shit, we yeah. fucked up. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so Bosby, from Pro Football Focus, uh, he gave up two receptions for 12 yards. One was a touchdown. He was targeted three times. 
Uh, so really not a good sample size to touchdown. make. Yeah, he gave up yeah. a touchdown. Not a great sample size to judge there. I think it was clear, though, watching the Falcons game that, um, you know, Bosby is a better corner than Harris. There's no debating that based on <laughs> that game. Um, but, yeah, it's – I'm glad it's he's back. It's bizarre, too, that – it's bizarre that Bosby would want to come back as yeah, well. That's, yeah, that's exactly my thought. Maybe he has point. low self-esteem. <laughs> if we're yeah. going to look at these people, these players as human beings, we have to recognize that um, they are flawed. And Devontae Bosby, is, uh, he needs to have higher self-esteem and not go back to his ex. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Play Kate the Broncos. There's plenty of fish out there for him. In fact, there's 30 other teams. There's 30 and, other fish. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I'm, I'm too, glad he's back, though. I'm glad he's back, and I think he he showed in what limited time we've seen him is he's a good fit for the way the Broncos run their defense. And the the – the Cardinals run a very different defense than the Broncos. So he might just not have been a great fit there. And maybe that's why they ultimately decided, like, let's move on. But uh, if Boye and Callahan are back this week, and then you've got Bassey, OJ Moody, A. Uh, Moody. Moody. Uh, Moody. Yep. And Bosby to kind of be your three pieces you rotate to. I feel better about the secondary. You're feeling you're feeling pretty good. Last week was kind of yeah. a low point. And yeah, it was a hard week for the defense in terms of who was yeah. available. And Shelby I mean, it Harris, just shows like how valuable Callahan is. Yeah, he's been he's been great. I think he's still the like the second or third highest graded corner uh, right now. Um, and then Shelby Harris has tested positive. So he's not playing for, he's got like a 10 day window before he can yeah, return. That, that one is big. And yeah, yeah he doesn't have any symptoms either. Um, yeah, so he's feeling he's good. He, sh- he should be fine. So he just won't be out there. Um, Alberto done with a, a torn ACL. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, it's big when you because when you step back and you kind of throw uh, Albert O in the mix, and then Shelby Harris, who's not playing, and then Purcell, who is huge. Like we have to recalibrate expectations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. expecting this team to like, <laughs> you're like if you're expecting the same thing you're expecting prior to Von Miller getting hurt, you're, it's just unrealistic and just it's gonna... not fair. You're going to feel like shit every Sunday. Yeah, because this team has been as hurt as anyone. I like, I think they're up there. Like, with the 49ers, like, you, you can be like Bosa and, and Von Miller. That's about equal. Uh, they both missed um, their quarterback for a few weeks. And I think going from Garoppolo to Mullins is not as big of a drop from, uh, from Drew Locke to Jeff Driscoll. Yeah, even Brett Rippon, but and then you, you like you can match it up with okay, well, the 49ers lost George Kittle, Denver lost Cortland Sutton for the whole year. Yep, I think everybody points to San Francisco as the most injured team, and I guess my point is that uh, we are right there. Yeah, and maybe more key injuries. Yeah, yeah, and we don't have Kyle Shanahan's uh, system to fall back on. No, I mean we've got Fangio, who I think has done defensively, pretty, yeah, defensively this pretty great bad. job of getting a lot of decent play out of guys you wouldn't expect. Yeah, um, it's just like Offense, not the case. yeah, it's Cortland Sutton, man. Drew Lock could use him out there. <laughs> There's no question yeah. about that. It's yeah, you know, we were so it's excited huge. to see. Jerry, Judy, and Sutton on the field together. And I think that'll be great next year. Assuming Sutton's feels good about his knee. Like, you you never know how long it takes for 
a guy to actually start to feel comfortable coming back from an ACL. It yeah, took Bradley like, Chubb, you know, a, that was a little the whole bit. Knee too. That wasn't just ACL. And yeah, like, did he tear more than that? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was ACL MCL, which is tough. Mm. Um, but yeah, at least it happened in week two. Um, yeah, I mean that's like I mean, Saquon Barkley had. He just got surgery like two weeks ago, and he tore his knee up early in the season. But they had to wait almost two months for like swelling and shit to go down in his knee, and he had multiple things in there. So, uh, yeah, you worry about like the bigger wide receivers and their ability to stay healthy. But I mean, that's where that's where it pays off to spend your first two picks on wide receivers. Like they're they're not really struggling at wide receiver. I don't. No, think. that's. I mean, that's what's crazy. Because they found a diamond in the rough with with Tim Patrick who caught a uh, his third touchdown against the Falcons, and they saw, okay, Drew Locke figured out in the second half. If I just throw it to Jerry Judy most plays, something good's gonna happen. Yeah, let's keep keep and, doing that, Drew. Yeah, it was interesting because when we had uh, Zach on, he was talking about like, what if they inactivate or deactivate. Uh, Albert O for a game. Right. Because it felt like he was kind of a crutch for Drew Locke. And Albert O got hurt in that game. Uh, and I'm sorry if I don't, you know, uh, <laughs> talk about him like he's a human being. But just to, like, separate it from, you know, X's and right. O's to you know, people to people. Uh, it felt like he got better. And he, like, read the field a little bit more. And, yeah, that has to do with a little bit of urgency and maybe the Falcons playing differently. But it should force him to – like, if you're going to lock on to anybody, you should lock on to Judy because he gets open more than anyone yeah. on the field. <clears throat> He's torching dudes off the line. Just absolutely yeah. embarrassing them. And that's the thing. I've, I never think... seen, I've never seen anyone throw out their hand like that and then cut back. It was so funny. It's just such a smooth move. He's going to be fun yeah. to watch. And I think, like – there are, there are a lot of plays where guys are open and Locke's just not seeing them. Whether that's him reading the play or it's a play where the pressure starts to break down the play and I think he will figure that out. We have to hope he's going to figure that out with just more reps and, uh, you know, I'll be patient with him. Yeah. And this is a good season to be patient with because any game the Broncos win from here on out will be like – uh, just a bonus because I don't expect them to win a lot of games. And like you said, nobody really should with all of the guys that they have hurt right yeah, with now. With all that's gone wrong this season. And it's not only the injuries too, but it's the plugging in a new offense in a season where you don't Without have an, an off season. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous to, to throw in these crazy expectations in the first place. Yeah. It was, it's like my, the, the last video I did, uh, uh, about the Patriots Jets game, um, I was talking about like the Patriots dynasty's over, but the Patriots could be back next year because they're another team that has had so much shit go against them that you yeah. should expect them to not be playing well. Starting with Tom Brady leaving, followed by eight or nine opt outs, then you have your normal run of injuries, a new quarterback who's admittedly saying he's had a he struggled picking up the offense like all yeah, of that shit makes it hard the quarterback to win it's covid for a couple weeks too yeah like that's the you've got the best coach ever and all of those things are making the patriots look worse than the broncos have looked you know what i mean so yeah i think they're i, I said the broncos the niners and the patriots all have very fair arguments about shit outside of their team's control that has caused them to be bad this year. And I usually the, you're just a fan yeah. base making excuses like for your team sucking, but I think those three teams have had a, a pretty shitty run. I think the further we get, uh, the deeper we get in this season, the more it's becoming clear that a lot of this is just going to come down to luck. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's like there's, it's so much, there's so much chaos going on that this kind of is starting to feel like a throwaway season. Yeah. And <clears throat> the, those first couple weeks, 
we were talking about how like, oh, the teams might make it without having any COVID issues, right? Like those first three weeks, it was, nobody was testing positive. They were, yeah. everything looked like they had figured it out. And now every week, it's just, even guys who don't test positive, who come in contact with somebody who might've had it, like the Steelers right now with Roethlisberger and all those guys, Shelby Harris was that, and now he has it. And as we know, like cases are fucking skyrocketing right now. And, uh, it throws Another, off your week of practice too. It throw, yeah, it throws everything off. So, like, which team is that going to happen to? Like in the playoffs, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. Right now, I think I see it as the Chiefs are the best team in the league, and then you've got a bunch of teams who are all really good, but I feel like can lose any week. But mm -hmm. what if the Chiefs in the first their first playoff game have to play without guys because of this stuff, like? Any team can have their shit derailed like that this season. And uh, yeah. I think maybe we get an unexpected Super Bowl at this point. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, uh, especially, too, it feels like in the NFC, you had the Buccaneers who were emerging as a clear favorite, and then all of a sudden they look like shit. On Nearly lose television. to the Giants, get worked by the Saints. <laughs> yeah. And did we predict it, too, that – Antonio Brown could – there was no, like, point – he wasn't going to help the offense. Uh, he could only sabotage it. And maybe maybe we were, we were right a little bit. Yeah, I'll wait another week. I've been on to something. I'll wait another week to, to, to make that judgment. But I'm going to take my victory lap while I can. Yeah, I mean, NFL Network was already <laughs> talking about if he doesn't play well this week, the Bucks should – or could just cut him. Here's something. Maybe they shouldn't have signed him in the first place. Yeah. Maybe Tom Brady should figure out how to maximize Mike Evans. Yeah. Mike Evans gave Johnny Manziel a career. Mike Evans made Ryan Fitzpatrick and Jameis Winston both look phenomenal in the same season. Tom Brady struggles to find Mike Evans. That's my favorite Tom Brady dig. The only guy who can't, can't properly throw to Mike Evans unless they're on the two-yard line. Yeah, what the f – that's one of the more bizarre things about that team yeah. is they're cucking and still not using Mike Evans. It feels like he wants to – can we – is this an issue of race? Should we look at <laughs> Scotty Miller's targets versus Mike Evans? Scotty Miller and Gronk's. And it, yeah. even in that – so – Gronk's bad. <laughs> he's really bad. He's slower. He he's sucks. had some good games. But then that Saints game, he just dropped a touchdown pass. <laughs> Yeah, he dropped like an out route too. He's not quick. And they're showing uh, something on NFL Network about how Malcolm Jenkins was on him and he was able to cut off those routes because he had no fear of being him going deep. Or, yeah. Yeah. And that's a new thing because Gronk could, like, he could burn you a little bit. He was fast. And now yeah. you, you me, don't have to worry about getting boxed out because you can stay in front of him. Let me tell you something Gronk suffered back injuries, right? Those are pretty yeah. serious. And once you get over 30, I can attest, a I back can. injury never truly goes away. I have to worry about my fucking back going out all the time. And it slows you down. And I think Gronk is probably, like, he'll, he just can't get back to where he was before physically because there's just shit wrong in his body. <laughs> just shit is O.J. Right Howard hurt? O.J. Howard's done for the season, yeah. Oh, shit. But they still have yeah. Cameron Brait. Like, I mean, I think – I don't know. I, I think, that, it's crazy how, like, the playoff picture can flip. Yeah. It's like game. right now you're looking at the Bills and Dolphins as two teams carrying some strong momentum as playoff <laughs> contenders. I was, I was listening to Bill Simmons on Monday, and they were talking about, like, you guys, like, what are the chances we see Cardinals, Dolphins in the Super Bowl? Was that a Super Bowl preview? I'm like, what the fuck? But then I thought about it again. I was like, who really knows this season? Yeah, no, it could be. I would love a Dolphins Cardinals Super Bowl. Oh, that would be great. I, that would be uh, that would be incredible if it was anything like that game on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, the the Dolphins could sneak in. Um, the Seahawks oh, second. The Seahawks like defense is so Super bad. Bowl. It's just yeah. There's like. Outside of the Chiefs, 
So it's just not like a, a team you're like, this is the clear cut number one. And even yeah, the Chiefs, Chiefs, the Chiefs lost Chiefs to the Raiders. Like Chiefs any team. Lost to the Raiders, like uh they really lost to the Chargers. Close with the Chargers yeah. and the Panthers. Yeah, I don't know. Like they could they could lose. And they're healthy. At some point, the Chiefs are gonna get hurt. Somehow they have not suffered an injury in like three years. <laughs> yeah. Like a major injury, like a season no. ending injury. No. Uh I did see I did a whole bit about uh Willie Gay Jr. He's starting to get more snaps every week for the Chiefs. Um, yeah, the Chiefs are getting gayer every week. Yeah, but that was your best joke from the best uh, named players episode. What was the joke exactly? Uh, Willie Gay Jr. translates to homosexual penis in my father's name. (laughs) 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 I I had a friend from high school text me out of, I hadn't heard from him in years, text me out of the blue (laughs) about that joke. (laughs) Glad I'm, I'm bringing you back together. Yeah, well... We will – oh, shit, I need to do a, a read here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's just shoehorn that in. Yeah, I didn't forget anything. What is today? Today is – Veterans Wednesday. Day. Veterans Day. This Sunday will truly be a Sunday like no other with this weekend's major golf tournament along with both NFL football, college football. There will be no shortage – of action. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sports book, wants you, wants to put you in the center of the action with so many different ways to make it rain. If you haven't tried the app yet, head to the app store now because you don't want to miss this, guys. Do you know golfers? Do you know any golfers, Will? Phil Mickelson. Okay, keep that in mind. I'm going to set you up. To celebrate okay. Sunday's action, DraftKings is ensuring all new users are covered up to $100. That's right. You bet they cover with risk-free Sunday betting on all of Sunday's action. And this weekend, there's plenty of action to get in on. So head to the App Store now and download DraftKings. Okay, Will, please mention a golfer that catches your eye. Uh, how about Brooks Kapka? Oh, that's actually a golfer I know because... My one friend who's super into golf named his kid Brooks after Brooks Kepka. <laughs> On top of these great sign-up offers, DraftKings uh, have special promotions and odd boosts every day of this year's tournament in Augusta, Georgia. So download DraftKings now. Now. And use code DNVR when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. DraftKings Sportsbook is ensuring your Sunday bets up to $100. That's right. You bet and they cover up to $100 when you use promo code DNVR during sign-up for a limited time. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Got to be 21. Colorado only. Risk-free coverage paid out in site credits. Restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Woo! Bah, bah, bah. Do you like to watch golf? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't trust anybody who really likes to watch golf. Maybe you just have to be old. Yeah. You've or you got to play it a lot. I don't know. I can't get into it. But no. I I honestly can't get into any sports other than football and a little basketball, so a little bit of hoops here and there. Yeah. I always just like to play them, you know. Yeah, well. You watch someone uh, try to do it on TV, and you're like, "I could be doing this so much better." And yeah, I got a, I got a. There's like a. We live close to a. There's a basketball court. Um, I don't uh-huh. have one in my yard because my driveway is too slanted, and I've thought about putting one. But it was. I went back there a while ago to to shoot some hoops, and uh, just was completely dejected, like. <laughs> It's like fuck. You really gotta. You really got. <laughs> you gotta practice basketball, or Easy. it goes yeah. away. Like I was. I was surprised at how bad I was at shooting. <laughs> and I, like I've never. I was never like really good at basketball, but you know I could shoot decently. <laughs> and I just missing so short, so long. I was like fuck. Uh, I'm like a, I'm a pretty good shooter when I'm by myself and I'm just kind of shooting around for for exercise. 
And then every now and then I'll just like join a pickup game and I'll realize that if anyone's like within 10 feet of me and puts their hand up, all ability to shoot goes out the window. Like I can, I can drain long threes uh, if like the, the entire court is empty and then just any sort of pressure in my face. And it's just, I might as well just like throw it at the back of the gym. Yeah. It's a, it is, there's so much finesse in that sport. And that's why I never liked it. It's like too much finesse. Yeah. Yeah. What if, uh, say you had a son, I'm going to use the Barack Obama hypothetical if you had a son. Okay. Uh, what sport would you try to groom him for? Well, I have a daughter and I'm going to try to groom her for uh, skateboarding or soccer. Okay. Okay. Uh, son? Uh, I'd say soccer too because I think soccer was probably like my naturally best sport. Uh, That's weird. It was kind of mine too, but I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I liked football more and I had to make a decision. I think it was in third grade. Uh, so I got scouted to play like on a competitive soccer team, mm -hmm. but it happened in the fall, which meant I couldn't play football. So I said, fuck that. I'm going to play football. And then I quit football in high school and I thought about playing soccer again. And I was like, no, I'm just going to keep skateboarding. And then our soccer team went in one or went to the state championship. Maybe they won. I forget. I think they might've won, but I was like, man, I should have just played soccer that through that whole time. And then I would have went and played on a state championship soccer team and probably would have been one of the guys to score some goals there. But I think knowing like my body size and that like my only athletic gift is speed. Like, I think that would probably translate to my son. You don't have to be too big to play soccer. Messi's five foot seven. So I think that's the way I would go. Um, and skateboarding was good, but at, at a certain point, you have to start risking serious uh, injury to get really good. <laughs> it's like, you're learning to do like rails and shit and you can, you can do like three stairs. Then you're like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try this on a seven or eight stair. Uh, I don't, I don't up. think I want to break a leg trying a, a new trick. So final answer, soccer. Okay. Well, we'll see how people uh, react to that. Yeah. I think my, I think my daughter might be athletic. What are you basing that off of? Well, she kicks a lot. Um, okay. she is outside of the womb as well. Yes. Very oh. kicky legs. Um, mm -hmm. Also, she's rolled over several times, and they're not supposed to be able to do that until like six months Ooh. old. Okay. So she's got some upper body yeah, strength. Um, I don't know. We'll see. What's the uh, most like disappointing sport for your child to be good at? Uh, probably like lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> lacrosse or like rowing. <laughs> Yeah, rowing would suck. Not to like watch. one of the not the one of the guys the, that's like actually rowing, but like the 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 coxswain is yelling directions. Yeah, male male cheerleader. Yeah, I mean because yeah. that that actually oh, takes yeah. like a ton of athletic skill and strength and shit. But I went to an all boys school and we uh, we oh. only had male cheerleaders, but they're they're actually cool. They didn't do like dances or anything. They just like they just fucked on the weekend fire fire the dudes up yeah i only say lacrosse too because like it's just such like an east coast sports thing and it's not yeah. really cool or popular anywhere else it feels not like really. um let's see golf would be smart because you don't really get hurt True. even soccer kids get a lot of concussions still um hockey would be cool hockey uh, would be pretty pretty badass yeah tennis i don't know i don't know about tennis no tennis tricky yeah it's just a trillion lessons you have to do private lessons you don't you're not really on a team yeah. you need that that team i mean let's just say like i we, we all want our sons to be like a football baseball or basketball player yeah or i want i want to force music uh onto my mm -hmm. kids early Hopefully make them good, like at an instrument and uh, 
skateboarding. Oh, you could. We could, yeah, force a child to become a f- filmmaker. Uh, I went down that road, and uh, this is where I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, your parents didn't push you enough, is the problem. No, they were too encouraging. Yeah, they didn't push me enough. They were too like, yeah, you're good. You're very good at that, Brandon. Keep chasing your dreams. <laughs> no, I want like a Todd Marinovich dad, but for uh, but for like being a director. I was too sensitive. I needed... Yeah, I definitely needed somebody to be more more like critical of my work growing up, whether it was like art or school or whatever. But uh, I think I had well, a, a we'll false. See what happens when people are too critical of someone's art? Yeah. What? You know, turn into a dictator. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's why. That's why in the 21st century we tell everyone that their artwork is cool and good. Yeah. When in fact it sucks. Yep. To- Took me took me a long time to realize that my skills weren't as good as I thought they were. Yeah, and here we are. Here we it are. All worked out for the best. You just watched a podcast. That's good, Broncos. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Good. And we'll be back. Well, I'll be back Saturday morning with a Broncos prediction episode that Will will have helped me with, but you won't see his face. Thank God. Good night and good luck.